It's a pleasure to be with you on a Thursday evening and an especial pleasure to welcome to the program Lieutenant General Tom Spore, former Deputy Commander of the U.S. Forces in Iraq. And if you want a guy who can go after big problems when it comes to threats to the United States, imagine a guy with, uh, if I remember correctly, service in the 82nd Airborne and the 1st Armored before he became the go-to guy when it came to anything in the WMD category, biological, chemical, nuclear you're the guy, right, General? Thank you very much, Lars. Thanks. I'm happy to be with you. And and now you repair things at home and go kayaking. But but in your spare time, <laughs> you help defend America against some of these things. I, I wonder, though, and we're raising the question because we think it's an important one, with all the focus on the coronavirus or China virus, whichever you prefer, is America's attention getting diverted from other potential threats against her right now? I think it is, Lars. I mean, you're seeing people like Iran, you're seeing China in the South China Sea, Iran with speedboats in the Persian Gulf. I think they're taking advantage a little bit of America's distraction and uh, and, and pushing back a little bit more in a way that probably they would not have gotten away with uh, had we not been dealing with this corona crisis. What's the, I mean, you must have had this experience both in uniform and, and even at the Pentagon. I'm sure there are places there where you get distracted from one thing and, you know, because you're focused on the problem you're working on at the time. Uh, I've heard pilots, uh, military pilots especially, call it cockpit distraction or cockpit pit overload, where you're so consumed with one problem that you begin to ignore the others and then the bad guys take advantage of that. What's the best way for America to make sure that that focus does not drift from the other threats against us? Yeah, I mean, I, your, your point's well taken, and, and we have this problem with America that we, we tend to just be able to focus on one thing at a time, and I use this analogy of a, a kid's soccer game. You know, when the ball goes from one side of the field to the other, everybody wants to run after it, be part of the thing, and we're a big country, we're a global power, we have to be bigger than that. We have to be able to focus on what's going on with the coronavirus, but we also cannot lose focus on China places like Venezuela, Iran, North Korea, all these other places that seek to do America harm. And we have to be able to do all these things at once. It's like walking and chewing gum at the same time. General, am I being naive if I say, well, while the rest of the media and the president and a lot of other people are focused on this, and it is the elephant in the room has been for the last couple of months, that there are at least people over at the Pentagon who walk in and say, yeah, China virus, fine, but I got my hands full with uh, the, the mad mullahs of Tehran, and my fo- or my focus is the little crazy man in North Korea, and that they at least, in those bureaucracies, which you've worked in at the Pentagon, uh, that they at least stay focused on their mission, even though everybody else is talking about the coronavirus endlessly yeah i mean the pentagon you're right does a good job of of not being distracted my worry is that the rest of the country is distracted and so we've seen in the media and other places uh uh columnists opinion writers that say hey you know this this coronavirus is so bad so unanticipated that we ought to uh, start looking at cutting the defense budget starting to move our attention otherwise from all these other threats and focus more on the pandemic. And so that's a concern of mine as I look out at because our attention span in this country is is rather short. Well, and not only short, but general, we've had some close calls with pandemics and epidemics before. And, you know, I, I, I admit to my audience, I was born in Taiwan because my mom and dad were in the Navy, uh, but in the United States Navy. Um, and I've admired the way they've handled it. They, they took SARS and said, hey, this could happen again. Not could, this will happen again. And they got ready for it. And we have little moments of that. But like you said, we focus on one problem at a time. And it tends to be, hey, we had a major problem with SARS. Let's get ready for it. And then everybody's enthusiasm for it fades in a period of time. New York, California, they all are good examples where they started to get ready for the next epidemic or pandemic. And then after a few months, something else distracted them like a shiny object. And they're like one of my Scotty dogs chasing a ball. Oh, that object is out of sight? Okay, I'll go after the one that's in sight. And, and the Taiwanese stayed, stayed on it. And when it came, do you know, right now I think they're still at below 500 total cases and I think six or seven deaths in a country of 23 million. You can bet that Gavin Newsom was, wishes he had that record in his state right now. Well, I think you're exa- exactly right. I, I do have to – there is a scale um, situation. And so people were also – they also commend South Korea for their response to the virus. And I tell people that's – 
they have done a, a good job. But South Korea is the the size of Indiana, and there's only you know there aren't any separate states within South Korea. So when you know the president of South Korea says this is the way it's going to be. That's the way it is in the United States government, and I think it's a good system, but we have federalism, you know, where we have the federal government, we have the states, we have the local, and they they all have their own measure of authority and responsibility at their own levels. And so taking coordinated, conservative, collaborative action in our country a, a bit more challenging. Uh, I wouldn't trade our system for anybody else's, but it is to get a coordinated response against a virus a bit more difficult in the United States. No, in general sport, I'm not suggesting that we go away from federalism. In fact, I think we're going to see some of the values of federalism as different states take different approaches to coming back out of the shutdown. I want to ask you about something else, though, and, and I think it's in your lane because you've got all this expertise having headed up these efforts against chemical, biological, nuclear weapons um, over the years. China, there's, there's at least sort of a, a, a going theory that, you know, this, this disease came about somehow whether it was out of the Wuhan Virus Institute or out of the famous, infamous wet markets, that China realized we have an epidemic coming at us, and seemingly they kept it quiet for a fairly short period of time, maybe a week or so, so that they could ramp up their own local response to it, but they put the rest of us at risk. Um, And I'm wondering, how do we deal with that kind of threat, where it may have been that China said, if we're going to get whacked by an epidemic and it's going to cost us a lot, and it seems it has cost them a lot, not only in in lives, but also in, 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 uh, you know, in growth, in GDP, um, that they said, well, if it goes to the rest of the uh, the world, uh, at least one theory, and I don't think it's too much of a conspiracy theory, if the rest of the world gets it too, then we get knocked down a few notches, they get knocked down a few notches, and we don't lose any advantage. We let our, we let the, uh, the people we compete against get it too. And, uh, and that works out for them. And it's, it, so I'm curious about your thought about whether or not you think there's any currency to, to an idea like that. Well, I think there's a lot of – I think that, that thought is on fact, and I think it was more than a couple of weeks. I think they, they had some advance warning of maybe a month or two on this virus that they held within their own country. A, maybe out of embarrassment. They thought maybe they could squash within their country. But again, like you suggested also, to kind of corner the market on – some of the resources that would be needed for such a uh, an epidemic. I think what we're going to have to do is, you know, in the past we have kind of relied on organizations like the World Health Organization to give us a heads up on that, and I think we've been oh burned God. on that idea. And so I think our country, maybe using our intelligence agencies and capabilities, we're going to have to just pay closer attention to these emerging viruses coming out of countries where we don't think we're going to get, you know, an immediate warning like China and North Korea, places like that, who's, you know, is not going to give us a tip off. We have to be prepared to kind of figure this out on our own, I believe. You know, General Spore, I'm curious about that angle too. the intelligence agencies, because I know I know a lot. You know, the WHO was making public pronouncements. The Chinese government waited till about the 5th or 6th of, of, of January before they did it. But I'm wondering when those when those uh, uh, those first infections were seen in November and then in December. And when Taiwan said to the WHO, you've got an epidemic or you've got a a major disease that's starting to break out here, were the intelligence agencies paying any attention to that at all? And is it their job when when they run across intelligence like that to pick up the phone and call some folks and call call our CDC, call the president's NSA and say, hey, this is a problem. If you're not aware of it already, don't wait for the Chinese to tell you about it. It typically wouldn't be high on their list of priorities to collect against. And so, you know, they, they work like, like Google does, and they have a list of keywords that they look for. And among those would be nuclear, terrorism, attacks, things like that. And so they wouldn't be searching on things like disease and infection and things like that. And, and, it, and it's almost that simple when you're dealing with electronic uh, eavesdropping. And so they have to kind of retune, I think, what they look for and and – those type of warnings, you know, the intelligence agencies wouldn't typically find out about them unless they had reached the highest levels in China, you know, and so they were. Yeah. Uh, other than that, they're not going to be reaching down to the depths of China and monitoring for emerging infectious diseases. General Tom Spore, thank you so much for your service in uniform, and thanks for the time tonight.